protein. Okay. So people think plants do not have protein. When it comes to protein, plants have plenty of protein. The thing is, when you look at protein, it's, it's made of amino acids. Your body uses 20 <coughs> amino acids in different combinations to make cells in your body. Our body has the capacity to produce all those amino acids except 11. So that's why those 11 amino acids you have to get from the food. So that's why you consider protein as an essential part of your food. When it comes to animal protein and plant protein, plants do contain all this 11 amino, uh, amino acids. The only difference is they are in varying concentration in different types of plants, plant-based foods. That's all the difference. And also when you think of protein, protein is something a plant can produce. It takes nitrogen from the air, it takes oxygen, and it makes into protein, uh, it makes amino acids. Animals eat plants to get that amino acids of protein. And sometimes when people either eat animals or there are other carnivores uh, animal that they're eating the animals, so that's where they're getting the protein. What you're doing is you're cutting the middleman out. It's not that you have to get the protein from animal. You can directly get from the source. So to the question, do plants have, pl have protein? Yes, plants have protein. But the real question is, how much protein do you need, actually, you think? Like, how, how, how much protein does your body need? Anybody who wants to take a guess? So we, 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 we have this term called protein anxiety, <laughs> right? Protein anxiety, right? Yeah. Like, you know, we have, we have the dinner plate, we have to have protein, uh, but we, we know very little. We don't know how much we need. Yeah. We don't know, you know, where to get it from, but everyone <laughs> wants to plan their meals around protein. And they think protein is only present in animal base. It's only, like, protein is equated to meat. If you ask anybody, okay, why do you want to eat meat? Because protein. Yeah. Now, uh, for a, a healthy man, an, a, an average you need about 40, 50 grams of protein. Women, on average, need about 45 grams of protein. You don't have to write it down, you don't have to remember it, because if you're eating a variety of fruits, variety of vegetables, very different whole grains and beans, you'll get more than what you need. Now the next question comes, uh, okay, like we need about 50 grams of protein per day, but majority of us, the people here, are getting about 100 grams of protein, like at least twice or even three times the amount of protein that we need. So what is, what is all this excess protein going to do? Right? This is not uh, like a simple thing. So the, more pro the excess protein that we eat, one thing you all have to understand is the more protein we eat, the more acid the stomach has to make to digest it. The protein uh, breakdown, to break down the protein, we need an enzyme called pepsin. And to activate this enzyme, pepsin, the stomach has to make an acid called hydrochloric acid. So the more protein we eat, the more acid stomach has to make. That is the number one reason why many people here have acid reflux. So over 50 to 60 percent of the people are on medications for acid reflux. These are the patients that I see in my clinic and hospitals. How many of you are on acid reflux pills? Right? And, 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 and one thing that uh, almost always reversed, like 95% of the people who went on this plant-based journey gave up their pills for acid reflux, which they were taking for over 20, 30, 40 years, half of them in like, you know, two to three weeks of changing diet. So one is, excess acid production in the stomach with the excess protein intake. Then the other one is our pancreas also gets, gets revved up because after the protein uh, is broken down by the stomach, the next step of uh, protein digestion is, is done by the pancreas. Pancreas has to make enzymes to break down. These are called trypsin, chymotrypsin, carboxypeptidase, elastase, You'll, yeah. have a you'll have a quiz too, and we're going to ask the question, what are the uh, pancreas enzymes? <laughs> no, you don't. <laughs> no. Yeah. But the thing is, uh, you, what you need to know is that you have you know, four different enzymes that pancreas makes to digest the protein. Right? 
So one of the reasons why we see so much pancreatitis, like pancreas inflammation, is again because of excess protein intake. Then once the pancreas and the stomach are done with their job, then the liver has to deal with the amino acids. Remember the protein is, is when it is broken down, you get the small you know, elements called amino acids. These amino acids has to have to be handled by the liver. And the liver acts upon them, it creates a toxic substance called <coughs> ammonia. And we, we, should, we, we can't store that ammonia in the body and the ammonia has to be you know, uh, excreted out. Kidneys do the job, ammonia, that ammonia is, get, is converted to urea by the kidneys. So you, by taking excess protein, we are asking our whole body to work more. You're revving up the stomach, pancreas, liver, kidneys. So the first thing you'll hear from doctor, like, you know, let's say if you or your family member happen to have, you know, liver failure or, you know, kidney failure, which we wouldn't wish upon anyone, the first thing the doctor would say is you need to cut down on protein. Give a break to your liver. Give a break, break to your kidney. So this is one, one, one way of effect. The other thing is the excess protein that you're eating will get converted into fat. So people avoid carbohydrates, you know, thinking excess carbs will convert fat. You know, you avoid fats so that, you know, that, that will get convert fat. But even excess protein is getting converted into fat. Then comes inflammation. The more protein you eat, the more inflammation in the body. So we're talking about more arthritis, more gastritis, which is stomach inflammation, more pancreatitis. Then the other aspect is the more protein we take, the more autoimmune diseases. Uh, like, uh, has anyone had uh, thyroid inflammation, like thyroiditis? and uh, inflammatory bowel disease, Crohn's disease, or uh, then uh, there is uh, diseases called like you know, lupus, or even different, some forms of arthritis. These are all autoimmune diseases. And these are also uh, coming from the excess protein intake. What happens is with this animal protein, especially the animal protein, protein it damages the inner lining of, this, uh, of the gut, and then the gut starts to leak. When the gut starts to leak, the, the, the substances that are supposed to stay within the gut, they enter the bloodstream. Then the body tries to fight these foreign substances that are coming into the bloodstream, but it, the body cannot differentiate between what is its own versus what is coming from outside. So then the body starts to attack itself. That's what we call autoimmune disease. And then also, the, the more protein intake, uh, the more protein we take, the more... Uh, IGF-1, which is insulin-like growth factor 1, which is a powerful growth promoter, one of the tumor marker for uh, many cancers. Like the more IGF circulate, more IGF-1 we have in our blood, the higher chance of getting colon cancer, prostate cancer, breast cancer. Yeah. So just to add to that, so whatever Arjun has been describing, he's describing about the effects of animal protein. Okay, so you might wonder, okay, what if I'm taking protein from animals and what if I'm taking protein from plants? The plant proteins act in a different way when compared to animal proteins. So Arjun has been mentioning that when you eat protein, there is increase in IGF levels. So that happens with the animal protein. So when you were babies, uh, your cells do need uh, IGF to divide. So, so that you increase in your size, your cells multiply. But after certain age, that IGF levels have to come down. Otherwise, your body is still getting the signal that it has to grow. And when those IGF levels don't come down, your body thinks it has to still produce, and the cells keep dividing and they form into cancer cells. So when you're taking that animal protein, it increases IGF level. But when you're taking the plant protein, plant protein, it uh, actually increases the production of IGF binding antibodies. So whenever you're taking that plant protein, it's actually decreasing the level of IGF. So that's how it acts differently. So, so people think, okay, maybe I'll do 50-50. 
I'll get 50% protein from animal. So since you're saying it causes harm and you're saying plant protein is protective, so maybe, I mean, I still want to eat meat and, uh, and, and I can get the protection from plant protein. Even when that was done in research studies, when you increase the consumption of animal protein by 2 to 3 percent, there is 23 percent increased chance of getting cancer. So it can be either prostate cancer or breast cancer or other forms of cancer. But when you increase the consumption of your plant protein even by 1 to 2 percent, it is cutting your risk of developing any form of cancer by 18%. So the plant protein is being protective and, you, uh, and whatever effects Arjun has mentioned so far, those are the effects of uh, an animal protein. So is, that, is it clear for everyone, like, you know, first, first thing is you can get enough protein by eating a plant-based way. And the second thing is excess animal protein has a lot of harmful effects. And plants have all the you know, uh, amino acids that, that our body needs. And they, you know, sometimes it's OK. Uh, sometimes one of your family member may ask you, like, you know, OK, if you eat, eat this uh, plant-based way, will you get enough protein? You can answer that very quickly, very simply. One, is, one way of answering it is, yes, you know, the plants have all the protein that, that we need. That's one way of answering. The other way of answering is, uh, look at the, the biggest land animals, <coughs> elephants. And even moose. Why you go yeah, to moose, elephant? Yeah. Moose, moose. Moose, you know, it... giraffe, or like, you know, <coughs> uh, hippos, or horses, you know, cows, the biggest land animals. Where do they get their protein from? Right? Directly from the plants, right? Moose only eats plants. It's herbivore. <laughs> yeah. So we, we, can, we, we don't have to go through an animal to get that protein or amino acids. We can directly get it from the plants. Yeah? Yeah. <clears throat> have you put that protein question to the rest? <laughs> <laughs> we, there is a reason why we spend so much time on that question of protein, because that will be the number one question. Like, you know, nobody cares about what you're eating when you're going to, you know, McDonald's and having a hamburger and with chicken nuggets and have an ice cream and a milkshake. Nobody cares about nutrition. But when you say it, you know what? I'm trying plant-based. Everyone starts to worry about your nutrition. Everyone becomes oh. an expert. Everyone becomes uh, an expert in nutrition. Oh, oh have... you know, where do you get your protein from? Where do you get your calcium from? Right? Yes. So... We want you to be experts in that just to, you know, so that you, you're clear in your mind and you're able to answer it. Even uh, you know, over a period of time, you'll figure out your own answer. Yeah. <laughs>